What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we have a special video with a special guest. I'm here joined by Lucy from Life with Lucy on YouTube, Life by Lucy, sorry. And um, it's really cool to have her on the channel today because she is somebody that has kind of really taken with the the technique of scripting and she probably has some of the more comprehensive videos that I've actually seen ever on this topic you know, journaling, putting forth your intentions, your visions in the form of writing. And she's had a bunch of great success stories over the course of the years. And, you know, recently has manifested some great things. She's living in this beautiful villa right now as we speak. And it's really great to have you on the show, on the channel today, Lucy. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much for having me on here. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we were talking a little bit before this and a lot of people have been having a lot of success. You know, one of my biggest um, videos on my channel or the biggest one is about affirming and specifically robotic affirming and how okay. that can be a really useful tool because kind of just going through that process of, you know, ingraining those new thought patterns into your mind in that mundane kind of boring way, a lot of the time when you get into that process, it'll kind of bypass that gatekeeper to the subconscious mind. And especially when you're, when you're in the process of doing things throughout the day, maybe mundane activities, talk about walking the dog, taking a shower. Um, Cause a lot of the time, you know, you, when you're, when you're trying to form new beliefs, new thoughts, new habits, there's a lot, there's that resistance that we all run into. Right. And so yeah. if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about, you know, do you use affirmations in conjunction with your scripting process? Just maybe just share some of that. 100%. Scripting, yes, is one of my favorite manifestation techniques. And we can go into explaining how that works a little bit later. But I love that you're leading this conversation about using affirmations, affirming, because when I work with my students, for example, and they're thinking, they're asking me questions like, what's the best technique? How can I do this the fastest? If there's out, out of all of the information that there is on the internet, you know, and I know it can be quite overwhelming sometimes. I remember when I first started learning about manifestation, I was just flooded with so many different videos and someone was telling me to do this and someone else was telling me that this works better and everyone's vying for your attention on the internet anyway, right? So if we could just cut through all of the BS and look at if I were to give someone advice when they want to know how can they change their reality, how can they start manifesting a completely different quality of life, if there was just one thing to focus on, it would be change your self-talk, change the way you are talking to yourself, change the words that your mind is hearing, because we are with ourselves 24-7 the majority of our thoughts are often on autopilot. The majority of what we think, what we say, how we react, how we feel about our life today is a duplicate of what we felt yesterday and the day before and the day before. And sometimes we're in patterns that are so, we've been in them for so many years or we inherited them, we copied them from you know, the environment we grew up in. So much of what we do is on autopilot. And so robotic affirming and things like that is basically like overwriting the system and deciding to take conscious control over what are the thoughts that are running around and around in our head. And I'm no neuroscientist, okay? I won't claim to be, but neuroscience does fascinate me. And I remember learning about how we have these neural pathways in our brain and basically a neural pathway thoughts travel through the brain along these neural pathways and the brain is very efficient. It loves to um, save energy as best as it can. So we may have one neural pathway, one thought pattern, which is really strong because we've been thinking it over and over and over and over again. And it might be a negative thought pattern. It might be a limiting thought pattern. And if that is our dominant neural pathway, our brain is always going to fire in that direction. And we won't even consciously be aware of it, but it might show up in our lives like we can never seem to earn over a certain amount of money or we keep attracting the same kind of relationship over and over <laughs> and over again. And it's just because there's a neural pathway that might be programmed to something limited, like money's really hard for me to make, or all guys are toxic, or all girls are toxic, or whatever it might be. 
and therefore we keep manifesting that. So if we can create a new neural pathway and using things like robotic affirming helps you to basically feed more and more energy down the new neural pathway. And like you said, it can feel boring sometimes, it can feel monotonous sometimes, it can feel like a lot of effort sometimes because you are literally taking the plane off autopilot and choosing to to fly it in a different direction. But if you do yeah. that enough, eventually the new limitless, more positive uh, neural pathway will grow stronger. And once it becomes stronger than the old one, your brain will automatically start going down that new pathway. And that is how you rewire your subconscious mind. And ultimately, that's what manifestation is about. You can try yeah. all the techniques in the world, but if your subconscious mind is still programmed to something limited, you're going to keep manifesting that limited result. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I love, there's so much what you said right there that I kind of want to, you know, I love the fact that you mentioned neuroscience because I think a lot of people in this kind of spiritual man manifesting community, they kind of like will go off with all this theory based on like things that Neville Goddard has said or various teachers, mainly Neville. It seems he's like the prevalent dominant uh, figure in the space. But, you know, just because Neville Goddard said something doesn't mean that you need to throw away all this other information, right? Neuroscience is a real thing. What you're talking about, neural pathways, those are so important. And one of the analogies that I often give people is like, it's like you kind of have like malware installed on your operating system. And you need to like get rid of that. Or another one is like weeds in the garden. The mind is akin to a garden. And if you have weeds in your garden, you're not going to have a beautiful garden. Obviously, you need to get rid of the weeds and replace them with the beautiful flowers or trees or whatever yeah. it is that you want to cultivate. And you need to be intentional with this. And you need to be aware for aware. Awareness is key. And then disciplining the mind to go over and overwrite and create those new neural pathways that you're talking about. So um, there's there's so much that goes into it. You know, I love studying about psychology and neuroscience as well. Um, and one of the things with, you know, it's just unfortunate um, that our society tends to be predominantly negative too. Um, the information that around us that we take in from media, from uh, our peers, our teachers, a lot of the people have limiting beliefs. And so as children, we pick, we pick up on these things. And again, we're running that story in the background, like you're saying, and it's the story that's just playing over and over and over again. And that's why some of these techniques that we talk about, whether it's robotic affirming or whether it's scripting, now you have a chance to actually be intentional with what it is that you want to believe. What are the thoughts that yeah. you're entertaining on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? Right. You, you have to become aware of that. What is the story that's dominating? Because And people will lie to themselves a lot. People will say, oh, well, I did this, I did that, but, you know you can tell a lot by the results that you're getting in your life. What, what, what are your true beliefs inside? And that's why yeah. like this, you know, getting and identifying those beliefs can be very, very crucial for people. Absolutely. And actually to your point about Neville Goddard, I think you're, you're right that uh, there's a lot of creators on the internet who are um, sharing his stuff and some may understand it deeply, others less. So I think actually if we can connect that, to me, when I think about Neville Goddard's teachings, I actually think that it is 100% connected to this conversation we're having about the subconscious mind. He, t Some of what he says, the, the verbiage is quite old school and yeah. he connects it a lot to the Bible. So people sort of see the religious spiritual side to it. But actually what he's saying is that your subconscious mind is God. Like that's the controversial thing about what he's saying. Your subconscious mind is the creator of your reality. And one of his most powerful techniques is about leveraging the moments before we fall asleep. So as we drift off to sleep, what happens inside our brain is it goes through different frequencies. And one of those frequencies is the theta state. And that just happens naturally every night as we're drifting from consciously being awake to falling asleep. And so what he shares is that it's very important for our last thoughts before we fall asleep to be focused on what we want and even better to already be there, like to be thinking from 
the point of view that you are the person you're already living that reality because then your subconscious mind opens just as we fall asleep and it absorbs that information it takes it for fact and it rehearses it while you sleep all night long so i i always now now that i've heard that i always think as i'm lying in bed okay in the past maybe i would overthink about things or you know, beat myself up, worry about things, uh, regret things that happened five years ago or whatever. And I'd just be lying there in bed, making those thoughts, the ones that my subconscious mind receives just before I go to sleep. So now that I'm aware of this, I will either listen to affirmations. I tend to read my scripting letter just before I fall asleep as well to remind myself of the things that I want as if they've already happened or I will listen to affirmations, or I will just visualize in my imagination a scene of something that I want, of a moment of my future, of the ultimate place that I'm headed to. I'll let my subconscious mind focus on that just before I fall asleep, because it goes straight in. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to a hypnotherapist and they get you into a deeply relaxed state to start reprogramming your mind, they're they're trying to get your brain into theta state. And we naturally fall into theta state every single night before we fall asleep. So we can hypnotize ourselves for success. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned that hypnotherapy too, because that is, uh, you know, I actually just got back that earlier. I was this, this lady guided me through this NLP session and in Mm -hmm. NLP, she used, you know, visual, visual um, imagery to step into this this state right and that that's what neville goddard talks about right and that essentially is what hypnotherapy is doing is it's it's removing that block in the through you know there's various different terminology they use pattern interrupts and all these different things to bypass that conscious gatekeeper so to speak and actually Mm -hmm. be able to go in and, and change your your beliefs change the way that you're actually the way that you actually feel change your state And, you know, obviously that's what Neville talks about is like, you know, the state, he's all about the state. And, um, um, so yeah, there's just so much overlap with all this stuff. And I think that it's really good and really healthy to actually take a more well-rounded approach. And I talk about that a lot on my channel as well, to look at all the, you know, the science, as you mentioned, and to look at what you're taking in, it can even be, you know, everything that you're taking in information wise, but also, you know, physically like the, the foods and the things that you're eating, the types of the things that you surround yourself with. One thing that we talked about earlier in our session was like, we're kind of like, we kind of alchemize to the things that we surround ourselves with. So that's why the people that we, you know, spend time with is so important. The information that we're exposed to and all of that. So yeah, you know, I think, I think, yeah, I think that self being aware of all this stuff and then consciously intending to curate your environment, curate your, the, 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 what you choose to allow into your life is, is also of crucial importance as well. 100%. I was actually reflecting on that. I think it was the last video I uploaded where I shared a bunch of different things that I'd written down on previous scripting letters over the last few years. I was going through each and everything that had manifested on the letters. And one of the things that I found that I had written several years ago was my business is thriving and I have the most incredible work-life balance. I work a couple of hours a day and you know, I'm working less and more money's flowing in. I'm paraphrasing now, but it was basically something along those lines. And in the video I shared that, you know, yes, I scripted about it. Yes, I visualized it. But I also 100% consciously and intentionally have been creating that life for the last several years. Mm -hmm. Every single day, everything that I choose to do, the way that I've designed my business and everything has been with that sort of beacon of light as the goal, the destination, the vision, if you will. I didn't having a work-life balance where I work two or three hours a day and I have all my needs met and we're moving to Spain and we have the flexibility to do like, it didn't fall in my lap. Exactly. And it wasn't handed to me on a plate and it wasn't an opportunity that, you know, was given to me by somebody I have, it's, it's a series of thousands of choices. It's a journey of a thousand steps, right? And every single decision that we make to your point about creating your ideal environment, 
it can be hard when you're starting off because there might be people who are living with toxic people. They're mm-hmm. living in a negative environment. And I get that question from people a lot saying, how can I stay positive all the time and high vibrational and focused on where I want to go when the people around me are constantly bringing me down? And I've been there and I know how challenging that part of a journey can be. But yeah. if you can do the best that you can in those kinds of environments and allow yourself to set boundaries, allow yourself to say no, allow yourself to distance yourself from negative influences Mm -hmm. and start taking control over creating your own environment day after day after day until one day you'll look around you and you realize all your friends, all of the people that you spend time with, your physical environment, your home, it will gradually become your ideal environment but that doesn't happen by accident it is through all the choices that we make absolutely i love that you make that point you know every choice every decision is a vote for the person that we want to be that's i think something that james clear said in atomic habits it's absolutely true and again people in this space they're they kind of like you said to like falling in your lap it doesn't stuff doesn't really happen like that and, you know, every once in a while, it, maybe it does. And maybe there's somebody that had some success story like that. But why would you even want to live like that anyways, right? That's yeah. a very kind of like lazy way to live where you're not really embracing life. You're not truly like living your life. And in my opinion, you know, what you said is so true because the action that you take is like you preparing for success. Like your right. actions that you take is that you showing the universe that you believe it is possible because you're only going to take yeah. those actions and walk by faith. With when you have that conviction that it's going to happen, you can tell by somebody's actions what they truly believe about themselves. Somebody can tell you, you know, they want to do X, X all day long, whether that's, you know, make their ebook, start their business. But if all if if all they do is come home and, and watch Netflix or they're scrolling all day long after they get off work, then, you know, you know where their belief system really lies then because your actions don't lie. And there's there's so much that goes into that. There's this book called uh, I think the body keeps score as well that mm. like, your, your body is your subconscious mind. So the physical actions that you take in this body that you've been given, you've been blessed with this physical body. Yes, we're spiritual beings, but we're also physical. Yeah. Is a reflection of, of who you are, of your soul. Like, yeah, that is, that is a manifestation of the deepest part of you. It is being reflected in your body and then the actions and the choices that you're making. So, you know, um, I love, yeah, uh, it's very clear to me as well that you've been extremely intentional with all this. And like, I have a lot of respect for people like you, like yourself, who have done this, have consciously created a business, have consciously decided that they don't want to necessarily participate in these old, this paradigm where, you know, you're trading your time for money all the time. Um, I think that what you're doing by helping people, having a positive impact, also creating time freedom, location freedom for yourself. You have this, this villa. I mean, that's, it's amazing what you've been able to do. And so people have a lot to learn from people that are actually achieving this success not sitting around on Reddit, Reddit or listening to all these, you know, people in this Neville Goddard echo chamber. And you guys listen to somebody like Lucy, who's actually living it, not just talking about it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I also want to express the fact that, uh, you know, I think it's important to share that you can still be a completely imperfect human being at the same time. Like, yeah take everything on board, the information that people share. I think uh, something that happened to me when I was really going down the rabbit hole of personal development and listening to motivational speakers and filling my mind with podcasts and things like that, that is all so great. But I noticed that something that I was doing to myself was I thought that, well, this kind of pursuit of becoming better can turn into perfectionism or can make you think that it's like Instagram versus reality, right? You have positive thoughts and negative thoughts. You have strong days. You have days when you're really not feeling powerful at all. And I still have both of the light and the dark. I have weeks that aren't as powerful, productive, happy, positive as others. And I think it's it would be a disservice for me to not also mention that because I don't want to come on here and be like, yep, my mindset's perfect all the time. (laughs) You know, like 
that's less inspiring. I would want yeah. someone to be able to leave this conversation and go, okay, I can work on this. I can immerse my mindset in that. I have the power to reprogram my subconscious mind. I have the power to create my reality and I can do it being an imperfect human being. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise we get paralyzed by comparison. Absolutely. I mean, it's a good point to make as well, because yeah, you know, you out here, especially in the, the era of social media that we're in, we just are exposed to everyone's best moments, their highlight reels on, on yeah. social media. And yeah, it's like, it's very important to actually allow those feelings to pass through us rather than completely resist because, because what we resist persists. Right. And if we yeah. try to bottle up all of those negative feelings that we get and try to only like this toxic positive mindset where it's like only think good thoughts all the time, then, you know, that's going to probably most, more than likely come back around and come back in some other worse format that, so yeah. you know, there's even, um, there, there's chemicals actually, they get released. I, I, I heard this recently when you cry or when you, you know, allow yourself to feel those negative emotions, it yeah. actually allowing those, those emotions to pass through you so that you can move beyond it. So totally. it's very valid. It's yeah. important. It's an important yeah. part of healing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which brings me, yeah, I'm, so I'm curious now, you know, you, obviously you were, uh, you were like the queen of scripting on YouTube. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, uh, I'm just curious, like, cause I've seen a lot of your content on scripting. I know how powerful it is from using it myself as well. I think it can be very, mm. very good for building a specific intentions, right? Cause we can do affirmations all day long, but to really dial it in and kind of put that intention out there in the way that we want it and very, be very specific and intentional then read it and reflect on it. And, and that can be, you know, extremely powerful. Is there anything that you have been using recently, any changes in the way that you've, you've adopted the practice of scripting or anything that you kind of could share that's been of value? Sure. Sure. And in fact, actually good timing. Cause I last week created an updated a scripting guide so I can share the link it's completely free oh, if people yeah. want to just literally go through it one step at a time but in a nutshell we can keep it brief for this conversation the way that I use scripting is I basically create a a letter of gratitude a thank you letter for the things that are my goals at the moment for the things I would love to manifest into my reality and I write it I write the things that I want as if they've already happened with so much gratitude, right? And I've addressed my letter to all kinds of people in the past, like dear universe, dear spirit guides. I originally wrote my first letter to Abraham Hicks because I heard of this technique through an Abraham Hicks video. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Whoever the person feels a connection to, they can write the letter to. And then the most important thing is that you pick, I usually recommend four, five, or six things, never more than that, because I've had people before and they, they've written like, essays of 50 things that they want to manifest. And while you can, of course, have it all and there are no limits, I personally think that it's it's more effective when you can focus your energy, your, your mind, your time on a small handful of things. I used to be someone to dilute my energy and then never progress with anything because I was spreading my energy too thinly and it was actually a form of self-sabotage. So yeah. I recommend focusing on four to six things that you want and write each one down as if it's already happened. Uh, I've now, I'm now working at this incredible company. Um, I've now manifested three incredible um, soul friends who live in the same area as me. I, whatever it might be that people want, right? So write a sentence as if it's already happened. And then for each one, I recommend to write a second sentence that embellishes on it and embellishes on the feeling, on how you feel now that you have that thing in your life. And another thing that I recommend is don't just say, uh, you know, oh, it feels amazing. It feels so good because that doesn't really tap into the real reason why you want something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I always recommend to people, think about what do you really want? And why do you want it? And be honest about that. Sometimes people say, oh, I, you know, I want lots of money so that I can give it all away to charity. But actually they would love to have a more comfortable home. They'd love to be able to say yes to their kids more. They'd love to be able to go to that. And it's like, go for it. Like whatever is the real reason why you want something, be honest about that. Be shameless about it. You're allowed to want the things that you want. So mm -hmm. Take some time to think about why do I really want these things? When I have it, 
how will I feel? How will my life be different? How will I, how will my relationship with the world shift? Those are the real reasons why you want something. So that's what the letter contains for each one, a sentence saying, I now have this. And then a second sentence that says why and how it makes you feel now. Do that with each of the four, five or six things, then sign it off at the end. Then you have your scripting letter. And then this part, the the part that comes next is equally as powerful. So then I take that scripting letter and I put it on my bedside table or in America, I think you call it a nightstand, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) that table next to your bed. Um, So put it on your nightstand and, (laughs) (laughs) and every morning when you wake up, first thing, don't scroll, don't go on YouTube, don't go on Instagram just yet. Pick up your scripting letter instead and read it to yourself while your mind is still in that theta state coming into consciousness. So that the first thing that your brain absorbs every single morning is your goals, but reading them as if they've already happened and tapping back in all over again to the real juicy reasons why you want them. And also every night, just before you drift off to sleep, before you turn out the light, read your letter, then lay your head on the pillow and drift off to sleep as if it's already done. So we're leveraging what we were talking about earlier, Alex, in our conversation about those windows when the subconscious mind is more open to receiving information and programming. And this is why, you know, it works on a spiritual level because you're aligning with that reality. You're feeling the emotions, you're becoming in vibrational alignment. We can use that kind of language, or we could say you're reprogramming your mind to this story. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. And so you're visiting this reality twice a day in those opportune moments. And if we just want to be super logical about it, I saw this article that said that you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals when you write them down every day, or when you write them down and you look at what you've written every day. So we can look at it from a spiritual lens or really grounded logical lens, which I think is important because different people's brains work differently. But either way, it's such a powerful thing to incorporate in your daily routine. And I read these scripting letters every day. I usually read a scripting letter for about 30 days and then I let it go. I put it away somewhere safely. And I've had scripting letters where every single thing has manifested within six months, like a chain reaction. Like my subconscious mind just leads me to the people I need, the opportunities that are perfect for me. I keep getting the same book recommended over and over again. And then I read the book and I learn what I need to know so that I can unlock that next level of life. Like it's wild how when I feed my subconscious mind with those things, it will then It won't fall in my lap, but it will lead me to the breadcrumbs that will take me to that exact thing, that exact outcome. Right. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I I love that. I love the way that you broke it down because I think that a lot of times, you know, people need people need a structured way to do things. And I think you you mentioned you you do it, you read it in the morning and at night, right? Those are the two times Mm. that you read the letter. Yeah. Yes. So I um I actually did this. I didn't do it with a scripting necessarily, but basically I kind of used um, like in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, he kind of has a similar thing where it's like a definite chief aim. It's only one thing, but I did this while I was doing sales. And I've talked about this on my channel before that I wrote about how I was just, you know, a phenomenal salesman. I was so good at sales. Right. And I also, again, it didn't fall into my lap. I was doing this. I was hitting, you know, doing door to door sales. I was working with a mentor of mine. He was teaching me. But I ended up being like the number one rookie in that region that summer um, doing this, you know, telling myself this, hitting up the door is hard. And, you know, there's a lot of value, like you said, when you when you go in and you instruct your conscious mind, I would read this in the mirror every morning and every evening before I go to sleep, much wow. the way that you're saying. And I would look at myself in the in the mirror. So I'd look at my own eyes in the mirror as I would say this. So I would literally be instructing myself on like, this is who I am. You know, this is who I'm becoming. Yeah. And, you know, I think that having a practice like this, I would love to try your technique the way that you've done it, because I think that like having, let's say, four different things that we're working on at once, that can be really, really motivating for us. You know, like there's obviously things that we want financially, there's things that we want maybe in our in our health and and wellness or and things that we want in our relationships. And so to be able to, 
you know, have this kind of um, overarching, you know, all of these goals written down and, and absorbing that con consistently, I can see that, that it would be immensely powerful. Do you find that when you do this, do you, do you get like little visualizations that come through as you're reading the letter to yourself? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I, for example, uh, when I was living in a flat in London, our apartment in London, um, I was visualizing what why i wanted to move to spain and what i wanted this villa which didn't exist yet we hadn't got a villa you know we hadn't found the villa yet mm -hmm. but i was visualizing what would my like a regular tuesday look like yeah yeah you exactly. know, not just like the moment we get the keys but like what would my r normal mm -hmm. life look like yeah I, i'd make that distinction a lot with people like you know one thing that neville does say which is true is like that natural that feeling of naturalness you almost want when you're when you're having this intention or having this feeling visualization whatever it is it needs to be normal and ordinary and mundane yeah and that's how you actually tap into sustaining that outcome because if you're in this yeah. very heightened emotional state um you know just another thing with psychology and also like in the Kabbalion, the spiritual laws principle of rhythm and polarity is that the higher the highs oftentimes the lower the lows then and usually mm -hmm. if i think in my opinion if and this is what i've seen in my experience and people that i've known but the more kind of giddy, childish excitement that you get about something, you might get it, but it might be very short lived then. It won't it won't really be sustained in your reality. So I like that you made that point about it. it's not the moment that you find it. It's like your regular Tuesday afternoon, chilling at the villa, you know, what's that gonna be like? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's a good point. That's a good point. And you can actually feel it's more powerful that way. I think when you're feeling I mean, hey we can express excitement and gratitude. It's not that it's not allowed, but right. when we're feeling like we're, it's super hysterical that we want something, mm -hmm. we're really kind of giving all our power away to that thing, putting exactly. it on a pedestal exactly. and forgetting our power. Whereas mm -hmm. the, as you say, I can, I can really understand what you're saying about the more sustainable way to not just get something, but to actually maintain it is to see yourself as power, powerful, enough of a container to yes. receive that and to hold it and to maintain it rather than if I pictured myself in a villa and feeling like a total imposter like oh my god this couldn't possibly be mine but this is just so spectacular that's a different kind of energy versus like yep this is mm -hmm. home and this yeah. is my regular life and I'm so grateful for it but I belong here Yep. That calm, again, the body keeps score. Like that book says, like that calm, assured confidence, it, your, your body is, is your subconscious mind is going to show up and you just feeling confident and calm and at peace with that thing. Not in this very yeah. heightened state where you're just super, you know, like flight, fight or flight almost about it. And yeah. like, you know, this goes for like attachment theory as well. There's like that, the anxious attachment style and then the avoidant, right? And I actually mm. find that in relationships, people tend to, again, kind of flip flop worth between those two things either being too fearful, like I'm not good enough for this thing or too needing it too much. Right. But that secure attachment style also pertains to our goals. Um, and so having that secure attachment, that's what, that's what we're talking about right now. So, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That actually reminds me of, um, a, a few years ago, I had the, the opportunity to go to India for 30 days and I spent all month with a Himalayan yogi and he's, really if we're looking at those vibrational frequency levels i don't know if you've ever seen hawkins yeah, scale seen of consciousness and you've got like love and joy and peace and then beyond that you have enlightenment and mm -hmm. really witnessing him the way that he thought lived acted everything he was living in that space of enlightenment where he judged no one and he loved and accepted everyone and he was calm. His nervous system was regulated. Yeah, there, might yeah. have, there were some challenges along the way. There was this big landslide. We couldn't cross this river because the bridge was broken and all of these things. And he was always calm yeah. and grounded. And he would just say, just sit here, just meditate. And then like 10 minutes later, this random person just came up and opened this other route for us to go up. And it's just like everything just flowed because we were in the presence of him. And I had the opportunity to interview him over that 30 days. And I, I said to him, I thought, what would be like the juiciest question to ask him, even though, you know, I wanted to be really respectful and everything. But I was like, what are the traits of someone who is fantastic at manifesting? If you could yeah. define who 
who a person could become, who, what they could work on being so that they can just be great at manifesting like him. And he said three things. He said, first of all, people who are great at manifesting, they're uncomplicated. That was the word he used. And I, I, that's really powerful. I think that could be interpreted to mean, you know, not all hysterical, not overthinking, not making things harder than they need to be. And just being uncomplicated. I don't think that gets I, talked about enough. You yeah, know? The way that I interpret that too is like kind of just being <laughs> present, right? Because then you're not dragging yeah. in this old past story or living in this, you know, anxiety is that future, future based living and, and worry or um, doubt. Or yeah. Something. I think is the past and so yeah just being present in the moment that strikes me as like resonating mm. uncomplicated uncomplicated definitely so uncomplicated was thing number one thing number two was to have an open heart mm -hmm. he said a lot of people walk around with their heart closed yeah right blocked off protecting themselves from being hurt again or something like this. But he said, when your heart is open, then you can really be in the receiving mode and you can receive what it is that you're asking for. And then the third thing again, was just so straightforward, but powerful. And he said, the person who manifests that particular goal, they need to have the skills, the ability yeah. mm -hmm. to sustain it. Like what we were talking about earlier, you know, Kind yeah. of like how statistically such a high number of people who win the lottery lose the money or spend all the money, blow all the money within a couple of years because, okay, they had an openness to receiving it, but their container wasn't necessarily ready because they hadn't gone through the process of acquiring the skills, the money management, the relationship with money, the mm -hmm. relationship between themselves and money in order to be able to maintain a wealthy identity and quality of life right so sometimes people are looking for the shortcuts whereas actually what if if you really that that vision that you want the shortcut isn't the best way to get there if you want to actually be able to sustain it and developing yeah. the skills the foundations you know going door to door whatever it takes to build that muscle mm -hmm. is really the key to then you look back two years later, five years later, and you're like, oh my God, who I am today is because of what I did that on like yeah. all of those reps that I did yeah. in the past. And putting yourself through uncomfortable, uncomfortable situations. That's, that's how we grow. You know, having those yeah. rejections or those quote unquote failures is the path of growth. I mean, that's what Maxwell Maltz talks about in psych psycho cybernetics. And it's absolutely true. It's your, that mechanism that's reorienting. Okay. This is, I need to make this course correction here. Right. And so sometimes yeah. going for no, there's another book called that is the best approach. And that's how to build mm -hmm. yourself. There's another thing that my friend says all the time, which is fast is slow, slow is fast. Yeah. And that applies to what you're talking about as well, because those shortcuts, when you try to be efficient with things, you try to make all those shortcuts, it's really not serving you in the long, in the, the long run, whether it's in your business, mm -hmm. whether it's with people in relationships, you making shortcuts, doing something that might not be the best way to doing, doing things that's not in the best character. Um, those things are going are gonna to catch up with you. You know, they're like yeah. in your business, it's going to, you know, people are going to eventually catch on. And so I, I like that a lot. There was one other thing I was thinking of. Oh, it was the first point you made about being uncomplicated. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of the times we get in our own way, like we are our own worst enemy. Um, almost what you spoke about before, we've all been guilty of this, right? Where we try to take on too many things at once and it's kind yeah. of self-sabotage, right? It's kind of, we're kind of making things too complicated. If we, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a very logical person and I kind of had ADHD is what I've come to, to realize. And then, or at least symptoms of it, right? Um, a little bit of neurodivergence going on there. Cause I'll just like go on off on, on these tangents and my mind is like connecting all these dots together, but I get into that logical headspace and I'm like, okay, how, how does this make sense with this and this and this? But, you know, sometimes what we need is like a healthy balance um, where, yeah, we can analyze and we can go into that, but it's, it has to be tempered with action, action towards our goal. And yeah. even if, we, if we're failing along the way, like I said, we can make those course corrections, but it's important to go and take that action in the moment too and be present and do what we know we need to do, move our feet towards our goal without overcomplicating it because then it'll bring the doubts in. So it's important to take the action. Then once you're done, okay, now it's time to like reflect make some course corrections and stuff like that, you know? 
Completely. One of my mentors said to me, what are your three needle movers? And I said, what do you mean? He said, what are the three things which if you, like another way of looking at it is, if the three things that if you stopped doing them, eventually your business would completely fail. And he said, it always comes down to like three things on average, mm -hmm. right? Which if you just do those three things every single day, yeah. your success is inevitable. And this could apply not just to business, but to pretty much any goal or any skill that needs to be developed. And this is, this was so powerful for me as someone who would, you know, I was at a point where I was overwhelmed, uh, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best, thinking if I just throw enough spaghetti at the wall, some of it <laughs> will stick kind of thing. Yeah. And sometimes there's a phase in entrepreneurship that can be super messy and you've got to try a bunch of things to, to learn what those three needle movers are. It's like, you do all of that and then you can trim trim everything away and just right. be left with the most efficient, productive things. Um, but yeah, he says that those three needle movers when done consistently, that is the key. Like often, to, cause I, I had the question of how can I scale? How can I scale things to the next level? And he said, well, actually to scale is usually about subtraction rather than addition. So mm -hmm. what time wasting things can you subtract? What things could you outsource so that every day, even on your days when you have next to no energy or next to no time, you could still progress on your yeah. journey. Um, and another way of, of looking at it as well that I sort of took from what he shared and I share it with my students is when it comes to creating an action plan, create an ultra version and a chill version, because I don't know about you, maybe, maybe you, I, I don't know whether it's a human thing or a woman thing, but I, I, let me just tell you, like no two days are the same in terms of my energy, my mood, my emotions. I just, yeah. I, you don't know what you're going to get. Right. So yeah. If I, in the past, I've thought, right, consistency, consistency, be exactly the same every single day, but I'm not the same every single yeah. day. And I would kind of be setting myself up for failure because I would burn myself out trying to do too much every single day when my best looks different every single day. So every day I have the choice. How do I feel today? What do I have the capacity to do today? Do I have the capacity to do the chill version of my productive tasks or the yeah. ultra version of my tasks? That way, no day is a fail. Every day I'm moving forwards. And if I just had the ultra list without the chill list, I'd probably be able to sustain it for a few days, fall off track, show my brain that I'm a failure. I can never stick to anything and just be <laughs> right. stuck in that cycle. Yeah. So it kind of gave me that, it empowered me to never feel like, I'm not doing enough, which is like something I used to really struggle with and instead be able to go in for the long haul. Yeah, I think that's very, very important what you said. I mean, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And, you know, we again, going back to the we become our own worst enemies then beating ourselves up that we didn't, you know, stay on track with this very, very, you know, intense routine that we've crafted for ourselves. It can definitely yeah. be a path to, to discouragement. And I mean, if you wouldn't mind sharing right now, just like what a glimpse into your chill day versus your productive day would be, maybe that might be helpful for people. Sure. Well, my needle movers are to create content, to, um, to check in with my aligned students, which aligns the name of my manifestation program, and to ensure that the systems to convert um, audience into customers is running well. Right. Right. So like, those are the three areas of my business, content creation, taking amazing care of the clients I already have and acquiring new ones. And so an example of content, content creation is the one that probably requires the most of my energy. So on a day when it's my ultra day, right. And I've got so much energy. I'm feeling motivated. I'm locked into my vision. I'm so excited about it. I will batch create content, right? Yeah. I, those, yeah. those are the days where I'm like, let me schedule seven reels. Let <laughs> me sit down, do my makeup and hair, get the lighting going and film three YouTube videos, right? Yeah. Or record five meditations or just sit down for a few hours and edit. 
Whereas some days I don't have the capacity, whether it's like my mind, my energy, or physically the number of hours I have available to me to do that. So instead of beating myself up about it these days, I will resort to the more chill version, which might be, okay, can I just create one reel today? And with Instagram, what's great is that I could just go back a couple of months, find the one that went, did really well and remix it and post it again. And nobody knows. And it reaches new people. It's great. So on my days where I'm like, I don't even have the brain space to create something new from scratch. Yeah. How can I be more efficient and still get great results? I'll recycle something that worked from the past. Or when it comes to creating YouTube videos, for example, I'll go, you know what? Today's one of those days where I can create a video from my phone without any makeup and my audience appreciate the realness from time to time. They find it refreshing from time to time to have a video with no fancy editing, no, none of this stuff that I overcomplicate it with sometimes mm -hmm. and just to lead with the message. And yeah. I'll just point, shoot and upload. So those are examples of I'm still moving forwards. I'm still progressing. I'm still adding value, but in totally different ways based on what I have the capacity to do. And yeah. I'll also say some days you just need to rest and do absolutely nothing too. Like we can do that also. Yeah. Um, but to sustain the growth and the consistency, I've found for me that works wonders. Yeah, no, I think so too, because it's all about, you know, that pattern of behavior and staying consistent, but in a way that is consistent, that is sustainable. Because yeah, if you're going to do force yourself to do it when you're not feeling it, again, doing creative work too, you might, the output not be, might be very great trying to do that as well. Totally. When you, when you like um, post the stuff from Instagram, do you change it at all for the YouTube shorts or not really? Cause I, I'll just straight up repost it because um, it's like, it's like people on YouTube haven't even seen it, but that's one cool yeah. thing about short form content is that, pretty much it can exist in the same format, whether it's on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, you, the meditations that you do are actually really cool. Do you have like a process of like how you kind of develop that? Have you learned anything about hypnotherapy or, or how did you kind of, how does your process for that work? <laughs> Thank you. You know, this is probably quite unhelpful because people want to know a strategy. My, well, maybe it is a strategy. I just tap into flow state. Yeah. I just get deeply relaxed myself and I just guide myself through the meditative process. I feel like what does my brain want to hear at this point to help me to go into that state? What's the question I could ask my brain right now that would prompt my imagination to be able to explore whatever it is I want to explore. And so I really go super intuitively there's probably people who've studied the exact right words that you need to say and all this stuff but i just do it very naturally organically and when i tap into flow state for me i flow state feels like it feels effortless it feels like very little conscious thinking is required i surrender to you know what to whatever kind of would be the best, most powerful message to just flow through me. And those are always the best ones. And I'm very happy that people love them. I read the comments and people, you know, some of my meditations are people's favorites. So yeah. I think it's a pretty good strategy because you can't be too forced and artificial with it. I've listened to some meditations before and have to switch them off after a couple of seconds just because it doesn't quite, you know, it's a very gentle process getting someone into it, into a meditative yeah. state. You've got to help someone to feel safe, to feel relaxed and just to say enough, not too much to prompt the right thoughts and emotions. Yeah. It is a very delicate balance when doing it. That's why I was curious on your process, but I think that's like a, an amazing way that you're able to do that. Do you have any tips for people on how to kind of enter into the flow state like, or anything that you do or to get in there yourself? I think it takes practice at first to um, get a feel for when you are in flow state and when you're not in flow state. Everybody enters flow state at some point. It's not like something that only some people can access. Like we all do it probably every day. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would be useful for people to identify when do I go into flow state? Like it might be when you're 
if if someone's a creative person and they're like jamming on the piano or they're doodling and drawing or they're going for a run and they like they don't even remember the last mile that they just ran do you know what I mean or mm-hmm. sometimes when you're driving in your car and you're like who drove who yeah. knew was driving just then you know and it's sort of like your sub your conscious mind takes a back seat and your subconscious mm-hmm. mind just leads the way yeah um or even you know going into being in, mindful in in tasks it can sometimes be like that other times when it comes to how do you get into flow state when you're speaking when you're recording when you're doing a meditation i the way that i got there was no shortcuts doing the reps practicing mastering my ability to use my voice to communicate to speak and once you like with any skill first it's very conscious and then when you've mastered it, your conscious mind doesn't need to be involved in the process. Taking it back to driving again, or maybe it's different in America. I don't know whether you drive with stick, like manual, or even either way, like when you first learn to drive, there's like yeah. so many things you've got to remember. When you first learn to ride a bike, it's so, you're so in your head about it. And then once you have mastered it, you can do it without even thinking. Yeah. And it's scary to then take that concept and put it into like pressing record and going into flow state. Yeah. But it's possible. It's possible with practice. And I think the practice leads to a a buildup of self-confidence. When you can trust yourself that you can press record and you trust that whatever is going to come out of your mouth, thoughts just in in your in through the top of your head and out through your mouth that's kind of like how i picture it when you trust that like that's going to be amazing yeah then you you don't get in the way you don't get in the way of the magic your conscious mind doesn't complicate it and doesn't get in the way of that yeah exactly getting out of your own way and i think that that's yeah and it's just like it's super true you know for making videos if you're just talking straight to the camera getting in that flow state, you know, I, I do it as well. I think that practicing that specific th- thing though, of, of a guided meditation, and maybe there's a little bit, it's a little bit different, right? Like you said, like it's, it's very about getting them relaxed, getting into that thing. So again, it's like practicing that specific skill set, whether you yeah. sit on the piano or you're playing tennis, or you're playing golf, you're going to want to practice that specific skill to get in flow state with that specific task yeah. or activity. So that's great though that you're able to do that. I mean, it, it comes through because that's why it feels really genuine is that, you know, you're really, like you said, you're talking to yourself and a, a lot of people will say, you know, sometimes the thing that you, your intuition's guiding you and the, the information that you needed at the time, there's a reason why maybe you're getting called to do that. Maybe other, like other people need that as well. So yeah, I think that that's like a really, definitely. Cool, yeah. A really cool approach to that. Um, that's, that's, the key with a lot of the videos I create when I feel like it's something that, you know, sometimes when you're like, would anyone else care about this? Or is this just a me thing? I trust that, you know what? The people who need to hear this will find it. Yeah. There's been, and that's often an intention I set before I create a video. Yeah. I like that. I love that. I love setting that intention. Um, that's powerful. And I've also heard that the more unique you think something is, like to you, actually the mm-hmm. more common that it is. Uh, yeah. Something weird like that. Some sort of like, yeah, like paradox in that way. Um, and it, it's, I mean, you know, we all deal with these things, especially things that are maybe more, less talked about in, in society or whatever. And sometimes those things might be taboo or they might be this or that, but it's like actually really a breath of fresh air when somebody's willing to talk about things that aren't normally covered because then you find out, oh yeah, all these other people felt the same way or or, you know, it yeah. resonates with people because you're willing to go there, which a lot of other people want to, you know, walk on eggshells or, or do something, you know, um, like you said, it comes from that place of wanting approval or wanting, like, it, it's a weird, it's a weird conundrum with art and being creative because at the, one, on one hand, if you want to be successful with it, you know, Stephen Pressfield talks about the war of art, which is you have to show up, you have to be, to be transition from an amateur to a pro you have to sit down at your typewriter we have to sit down and record a video you mm. sit down and make the song right but at the same time you want to be doing it kind of like what you said you before leaning into how you're actually feeling 
if it's if just today you only feel like making one video or it's not really coming through you can pick a different way of uh, of doing it but if it's really coming through then you need to you know latch on to that that inspiration but sometimes the inspiration doesn't come until you start so there's just so yeah. much that's complicated with the act with the creative process there's this book by Rick Rubin I don't know if you're familiar with him called the creative act but he also talks about how you need to create for yourself because if you're creating any sort of art or any sort of creative work only for people outside of yourself, it's not going to be like a genuine, authentic expression of yourself, of, of you, you know? So. Yeah, very true. I burnt myself out doing that in the early days of YouTube and it's all different phases. You yeah. know, phase one was like, take messy action model other more successful YouTubers, mm -hmm. identify what the trends are and only make videos about trending topics. Exactly. And those are, you know, powerful YouTube growth strategies. And that's phase one and, you know, rightly so. But then it reaches a point where, or I reached a point where I'd grown in subscribers uh, skills, abilities, and things like that. So it was all, it all paid off. And yet I felt very burnt out by the process because yeah. I hadn't, I was only thinking about what do they want? What do they want? What do they want? And feeling like a bit of a slave to the process. And I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't expressing what I needed to express for myself. And as you say, when you start expressing those things, that's the one that sometimes people can connect to 10 times more, or it's like the one that takes off as well. So it, it, it's like, it's not that one's better than the other or that only one can exist. I think both sides of content creation can simultaneously exist, but you've got to have both. Cause if not, you can end up feeling a bit burnt out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You feel a bit burnt out or on the flip side of that, if you only take action when you're feeling that massive inspiration, then you, you're not going to be taking enough action then at that point. So that's why it has to be a balance. You know, everything in life, just having that ability to see things as not black and white is a huge, yeah. crucial, successful thing, foundational piece for people. And, mm. you know, that actually, that reminds me actually too of what we were talking about earlier when it comes to business, like just knowing what you said about the three needle moving activities, right? You want to be doing that. You want to like when you're building a house, you want to make sure that the foundation is good first, right? You want to make sure there's no cracks in the foundation before you start putting the paint on the house. And I feel I liken what a lot of people do. I feel like when it comes to business, I think it's a good metaphor and it applies to other areas of life as well, is they're trying to put paint on the house. They're trying to do, put the little decor on the house and stuff and, and all this stuff, you know, you start a business, you want to put the LLC together and, and make a website and like get business cards. It's like, what do you... You know, you don't have any, you're not making any money yet. So you need to focus on those things like acquiring yeah. customers, prospects, um, you know, making sales, um, generating the cash flow in order for you to then have the kind of right to do the other things, the things that maybe totally. you think are more fun or maybe, yeah, you think are more up your alley or, or that have that creative aspect. But yeah, it's, it goes for a mm. lot of things in life is just like it, a lot of things in life, even for ourselves on an individual basis is getting rid, like you said, subtracting, what are the negative habits that I'm doing right now? You know, what are yeah. the things that are wasting time, the time wasters in my life, the time sucking ask things, whether it's people, situations that I'm giving my time to, because that's how you're going to take your power back. That's how you're going to amp up that ability to create what it is you want in your life. And, and by having standards, you know, we don't rise to the level yeah. of our desires. We often, we fall to the level of our habits and our standards and what we're used to. And as you mentioned before, yeah. the types of relationships, unfortunately, people that grew up in broken homes and things of this nature, they often find themselves back in those relationships again. Even even if they mm -hmm. find somebody with a secure attachment style, somebody with the, that was a good, you know, right fit, if they want a healthy relationship, but they don't know, that's not what they know. That's not what they're familiar with. So then they, re they go back to these old habits. They might self-sabotage a relationship and then they find themselves in these relationships, um, which are, you know, not serving their growth. But that's why it's, again, so important that we take time to understand what these stories are that we're telling ourselves. Use scripting and intentionally create this new letter that you mentioned. That's a fantastic way for people to start that process. Um, yeah. do, you, do you have any, any other things that you've been doing lately, aside from the scripting technique, the letter, or anything else that's 
kind of been working really well for you lately? Yeah. So uh, I've, as I mentioned to you, I think before we pressed record, I'm temporarily back in the UK while I'm getting my visa and like long-term residency approved in Spain. Yeah. So, you know, I was kind of looking at it in two ways. I was thinking, you know, I could be sad about it. I'm, I'm away from my husband. I'm away from Spain and all this stuff. Uh, I'm living on my own here right now. And I was like, you know what? Let me go into, let me use this time as like, let me make it count, you know? So I thought, yeah. how could I use this time to reprogram my mind like totally for my next level? And so it's a combination of many different things that I've been doing that I feel like are all important pieces. So one key thing for manifesting our next level is to make sure our nervous system is regulated, right? As you, this is all touching upon the things that we've already talked about in terms of like feeling desperate, putting it on a pedestal, being hysterical about what we want, being obsessive about what we want in a negative way, mm -hmm. or knowing our power, being at peace with that, feeling strong and powerful, feeling like a container that's ready to receive, feeling like it's safe to receive the thing that we want. That's a huge thing for yeah. a lot of people. Like it's safe. Like that's a powerful form of affirmations. Mm -hmm. It's safe for me to make more money. I saw that. It's safe. It yeah. It's if there's ever, if anyone ever finds that sometimes with some affirmations, it's just like, you just can't get on board with that one. Like if you have a real sort of negative belief affirming the opposite, that's so deep rooted Mm -hmm. Like some people might get triggered with affirmations that say something like I am rich because the word rich kind of has such a negative connotation from people talking about how rich people are evil or whatever it might be, yep. or that it's scary for them, or whatever it might be. Like instead of I am saying it's safe for me, mm -hmm. it's safe for me to be rich. It's safe for me to make more money. It's safe for me to feel beautiful. It's safe for me to be confident in front of other people. It's safe for me to be in a loving, harmonious relationship. It's safe for me to be respected by others. Like these things that we might think, do I feel unsafe? Well, actually often if we think about it, we are. And as long as we are not feeling safe about the thing that we want, we will subconsciously prevent ourselves yeah. from having it. I had so this, nervous system. Go just ahead. Jump, let me jump in real quick. I had this realization a while ago and ultimately what it comes down to too is it is that safety. Because what we were talking about earlier, the anxious and the avoidant, that's fight or flight. That's when your nervous yeah. system is out of whack and you won't feel safe. You know, whether it, may, whether it be fame, whether it be um, being rich, any of these things, you, you, you feel unsafe. Maybe you've absorbed these ideas and it's like that feeling of safetyness is that feeling of relief. And that's where you get that calm centeredness where it's like, yeah, this is yeah. So cool. This is chill. It's I'm chilling at my villa. I'm not like, oh, going crazy about this villa. Right. That's just another Tuesday afternoon, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, such a good sorry point. To interrupt you, but yeah, I just, I really, it is very, 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 very um, important. Like what Lucy's saying right now, that that feeling of safety is that sigh of relief that you feel when you're safe is the is the feeling feeling is the, that we want to tap into. And I would say it's not really a feeling yeah. as much as it is an awareness. It's not like we're in some charged emotional state. We're aware that we are safe, holding, like you said, having this container for this thing in our life. Yeah. So, yeah, without that, then all the rest of it, any other technique you're trying is just, it's uh, like you saying, trying to paint a house before you've built the foundations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not going to lead to much. So, yeah. So things that I do to help regulate my nervous system are affirmations, affirming that I am safe, uh, breath work. I start my day every morning with 20 minutes of guided breath work. I follow a, a track on Spotify, on YouTube. Um, it's basically following a Wim Hof, Wim Hof breath work method, but it's by this woman called Shiva Rasa. And I just find her voice so relaxing. So oh, I do no. that when I wake up every day. Um, other things that I do that I'm doing more of at the moment while I'm on this kind of like focus drive to reprogram my mind is things like tapping as well. So I don't know if you've ever tried EFT tapping, but basically I've it's heard of it. I haven't tried it though. 
So it's a combination of using essentially forms of affirming what you want, but at the same time, it looks super silly when you're doing it, but you tap on these different meridian, like acupressure points on your body and it anchors things in, in a different way and helps your body. As you said, your, your body is your subconscious mind. Your body is where you store your emotions and your beliefs. Right. So it really helps to literally tap them into your body. So those are kind of like things that I do when I really want to help myself feel safe to be open to the next level of life that I want. Um, then when it comes to to affirmations, I loved how you started this conversation with robotic affirmations and things like that. I've not actually tried, well, I've dipped my toe into robotic affirmations and I think I can't say that I've done it enough to really, you know, have have felt the, the benefits because you've really got to immerse yourself in whatever technique that you want to try, right? Um, but similar is I discovered that there's an app called Parrot, if you have an iPhone or easy voice recorder, if you have an Android and it's like a voice memo app, but the key difference is that once you've recorded your voice memo and you press play, it will loop for as long as you want it to. Mm -hmm. And so you could record your voice saying your affirmations, saying whatever new belief you want, say whatever you are calling in, say whatever new story you want to speak over your own life, record yourself saying it for a couple of minutes long or whatever it might be, or 10 seconds long, whatever it is, press play. And then it's just there. Yeah. It's another, I suppose it's another almost form of robotic affirming. I have that playing while I'm getting ready in the morning, while I'm walking, in my headphones while I'm drifting off to sleep. If there's a new story that I want to flood my mind with and dominate my mind with, for me, it's a nice low effort way yeah. to be able to drum it into my head. No, I love that. Yeah. I mean, um, I've recorded affirmations of my own before as well. I've never, I haven't heard of Parrot, so I have to check that out because I think that having that and just you know especially if you get into the flow state like you mentioned earlier and then you're you're telling this this new story that's just coming through you kind of like divinely yeah. inspired and then you just get that on a loop i mean that's that's dope you could walk around with your airpods just like doing your and just listen to that and yeah that, that is absolutely robotic affirming especially if you keep it on a loop and you're doing whatever it is you're doing you're driving you're doing all this stuff that you normally do that's going to sink in. That's going to sink in on a deep level, especially listening to your own voice. It's very powerful. I've told people yeah. this before, you know, recording yourself, looking at yourself in your phone is a really powerful thing too. Because like we talked about, the body mm. is the subconscious mind. When you speak to yourself, you look at yourself in the mirror or you look at yourself in the, in the eyes and you're telling yourself this, and it can be audio as well. But if you do it on camera, you are now like experiencing yourself in the th- third person People a lot of the time say, uh, you know, first person visualization only, but I disagree with that because, you know, Michael Phelps and a lot of these athletes that are trained in visualization, they talk about how that he will imagine himself in the stands, watching himself with perfect technique going to the swimming race and beating his opponents, right? He'll also imagine the negative thing of what if he messes up and what he's going to do in that situation. But all of these things can be very powerful because you don't know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what success looks like until you see it. If you see yourself, True. you can you can embody that characteristic, you can embody that calm body language that is an indicative of that person that gets what they want in life, that gets the result that you're going for. And if you're yeah, if you're carrying around that tense, uh, weird energy in your body, <laughs> you're not going to be like what we talked about in you know having that secure feeling towards what it is. You're gonna be in that fight or flight. You wanna make sure, like Lucy's saying, that you're regulating your nervous system. And breath work, all of these different things are tools, but hearing your own voice and hearing your and watch and seeing yourself can be extremely powerful for, you know, developing these, this new way of being that you're telling yourself. Yeah. So awesome. Cool. Well, it, we're, it looks like we're hitting about the hour mark here. Um, if there's anything else that we want to cover real quick before we wrap up um, or anything else that comes to mind, I'd be, do you, do you do like lucid dreaming at all or anything like that? It fascinates me, but no, I haven't, I haven't really dived into it. Yeah. Um, dreams are a whole incredible, um, way of tapping into other dimensions. Yeah. I know of people who fully can do that and it just, 
blows my mind. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. But the thing is, I have trouble with dream recall. So if I need if I want to get mm. going with it, I need to like keep a journal right by my bed and immediately write down my dreams or else I'll forget them. And what helps me get, you know, achieve that lucidity is making sure that I remember them first off. Once I get in the habit of remembering them, then I can, you know, especially in the early hours of the morning, I'll kind of drift in and out of consciousness maybe a bit, and then I'll be able to tap in and start, you know, controlling the dream, so to speak. But yeah, it's, mm. it's definitely a, a powerful practice as far as like developing that, that awareness that you actually do have, you can kind of like compose your reality a bit when you tap in. And I feel like when you're in that flow state, that's another thing too, or, or something that I've experienced, you know, on, on whatever, like psychedelics and things you've, I've had various experiences mm. where you feel like you have that reality is more permeable. It's kind of made of that substance. Yeah. Um, and, and things like that. Um, real quick, do you have, do you eat, do you, do you eat pretty clean or what, do you, what do you do for food? <laughs> Fairly clean. Yeah. I, I've been a vegetarian for quite a few years that I noticed made a big difference to me. I'm not teetotal sober, but Meaning. I find the more clean that I eat and the less alcohol that I drink, the more very sensitive to it that I am when I do. Mm -hmm. And if I do have a drink of alcohol the next day, like I, I won't drink enough to actually get drunk, but it, it will be enough for me to feel so awful the next day and like really? out of alignment and yeah. uh, less, less able to ground myself and feel really mm -hmm. calm and at peace. Yeah. So because I've experienced that, it's not that appealing for me to drink alcohol or things like that anymore. So I'll do it sparingly. I'll do it like for a special occasion or like mm -hmm. one drink if I feel like it sometimes. But yeah, since, and also since drinking less alcohol and maybe it was also around the same time that I stopped eating meat, my inflammation disappeared. Like I used to have quite puffy face and puffy eyes and things like that. And yeah inflammation just dropped from my body that's awesome yeah you know i talk a lot about you know again this holistic approach like neuroscience you know the body again yeah so it's like by eating better food we're going to have a better more regulated nervous system because i noticed personally when True. i eat processed foods or carbs and stuff and yeah drinking it can be as well but especially carbs if i'm eating carbs i get like brain fog my brain isn't working right mm. and you know um and of course, you know, to each their own, everybody has their own, like for me, I eat meat um, and I don't necessarily yeah. notice any adverse effects to that. But I, again, I try to, I try to eat more high quality sources of meat and things like that, but yeah. again, it all goes hand in hand and your physical state, your uh, body state is going to be affected by the food and the information that you're taking in. So that's why I always am curious yeah. with uh, talk, speaking with you that I figured that you ate pretty, like a pretty good diet. You probably, do you do like meal prep and stuff at all or? My husband is really great at cooking, so <laughs> fortunately he does that, and that's dope, dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of his zone of genius. So I get to enjoy the food, and he gets to enjoy cooking it. Yeah. Um, but yes, gut health and its connection to our brain is a whole different podcast episode. Yeah. We could talk about that, but <laughs> if yeah. uh, if people start to research into how can I take better care of my gut health. And also things like stress, smoking, alcohol, processed foods, all mess up the gut microbiome. Yeah. So how can we reduce the way that we're kind of uh, causing an imbalance in our gut? And how can we also replenish our gut microbiome? So taking things like good quality probiotics, um, things that are anti-inflammatory, like aloe vera as well can be great, getting enough fiber. If we take immaculate care of our gut health, when I started really prioritizing my gut health, brain fog lifted, mm -hmm. uh, the cloud of like kind of subtle depression yeah. just kind of lifted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was like really it's wild. I was low in vitamin D, like dangerously low. And so it actually was like affecting my hormones. It was like a lot of stuff. And so magnesium is also very good for, you know, inflammation. Mm. There's a lot of supplements and, and information out there that people can, you know, take it upon yourself to check out and that kind of cloud, that hazy cloud is going to be, it's not going to be helpful for whatever it is that you're trying to draw into your life, any positive energy you're trying to bring in. So that's why I'm always curious, you know, and I figure yeah. you look like you have like that nice, bright vitality and that dope energy. So I, you know, I figured, Thank you you. <laughs> yeah, good. It's look. all connected. It as is you all say. It it is is yeah. yeah. 
Awesome. Well, Lucy, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, really, really love this conversation that we had, and, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. Um, I'm going to be leaving for all of you guys watching this, all of Lucy's information down below. Maybe we'll be able to drop that uh, that Breathwork track, too, that you listen to. Yeah, sure. I'll people. send it over to you. Okay, sweet. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, drop this a like. Let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Hit me with a subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.